We are getting ready to take the derivative of logarithmic functions, but before we do that, we're going to find it very helpful to review the logarithm properties because it's going to make finding the derivative a lot easier. At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to use the properties of logarithms to simplify and unsimplify expressions. All right, first of all, let's go ahead and look at logarithms and their properties. A logarithm is basically just an exponent, just a little FYI there. So when we're finding the log of something, it actually is an exponent when we do that. Um, we're going to be looking at several different logarithm properties that we will be using to simplify and unsimplify expressions. First of all, if I have log base a of 1, that is going to equal 0. And the reason is, um, when we're working through this, a to the 0 power would give me 1. Right? The natural log of 1 is also going to be 0, because if you have a natural log, remember that base is e e to the 0 would equal 1. So that's what that means. Um, if I have log base a of xy, the way that we are going to unsimplify this is log base a of x plus log base a of y. All right, and then the next one, if I have a log base a of x to the n, we are going to simplify this as we can bump that n out front. So the way that we'll simplify that is n log a of n. And both of those would be the same if you had an ln, log base a or ln, because ln is just base e, um, would be the same. Okay, and then we have log base a of x over y. The way that we will rewrite these would be log base a of x minus log base a of y. And then the natural log of e is going to be 1, and the reason is um, an ln is an the base is e, so we'd have e to the first power is equal to e. So if we remember these properties, when we're using them to simplify expressions before we take the derivative, we will find them very helpful. All right, so let's go ahead and look at a few examples that says to use the properties of logarithms to write the expression as a sum, difference, and or multiple of logarithms. And again, we're basically taking something in simpler form and we are unsimplifying it, and the reason we are doing that is because taking the derivative will be a lot easier if we do that. Okay, if we have the natural log of 1 over 5, we are going to use property 5 for this, since there is a fraction, and we are going to rewrite this as the natural log of 1 minus the natural log of 5. And then from here, I can actually simplify this one a little bit more, because we know that property 1, or property 2 actually, the natural log of 1 is equal to 0. So if we have 0 minus the natural log of 5, my final answer will be negative natural log of 5. So that is that expression, simplified or unsimplified. Okay, the next one, we have log base 3 of the square root of x minus 1. What we would like to do with this one is, again, we're going to try to get rid of things that might cause us issues. The square root of x minus 1 is going to be x minus 1 to the 1 half power. So I'm going to rewrite this problem as log base 3 of x minus 1 to the 1 half power. And then I am going to use property 4, which tells me if I have a, an exponent, we can bring that exponent out into the front of the problem. So this would actually be written as 1 half log base 3 of x minus 1. So that's what that, prob that problem would look like, kind of unsimplified. Okay, problem three, we have ln 3e squared, and I'm just going to say that this really means ln 3 times e squared, so there is multiplication there. So since we have multiplication, we are going to use property three, which tells me that I can separate it into two logarithms with addition. So I'm gonna have the natural log of three plus the natural log of e squared. And I'm not quite done yet because now I have a power. So with my power, we know we can bump powers out front according to property four. So I'm going to have the natural log of 3 plus 2 natural log of e. And then we know by property five, 6 that the natural log of e is equal to 1. So we'll have natural log of 3 plus 2 times 1 is 2. So that would be my unsimplified answer. And then problem 4, we have the log base 2 of x times the square root of x plus 2. So first of all, this is a multiplication problem. And I'm going to rewrite this again. I have the log base 2 of x times x plus 2 to the 1 half power. Okay, the next thing that I want to do, since there's multiplication, we're going to separate it with addition using property 3. So I'll have the log base 2 of x plus the log base 2 of x plus 2 to the 1 half. Please notice I did not move the 1 half out front first because it's only attached to the x plus 2, so we do want to separate them first. And now from here, we know from our property 4 that we can go ahead and bump our power out front. So this is going to be log base 2 of x 
plus one half log base two of x plus two. And you might think it's kind of crazy that we would take something um, less complicated and turn into something more complicated, but when we go to take the derivative of this um, drawn out equation, it's going to be a lot easier than if I started with what the problem was. So hopefully now you can use the properties of logarithms to simplify and unsimplify expressions.